Hello everyone, welcome back again in this sixth module on isoprobabilistic transformation. Uh, this is the last lecture in this module and we are going to discuss Rosenblatt transformation and its application for reliability analysis. Earlier we studied Morgenstern and Natoff model and we also solved some numerical problems to see how we can use those models to develop joint distribution. Now, in case of Rosenblatt transformation, again, uh, we have a set of random variables. So, we uh, have a CDF for capital X, which is the original domain. And then in this domain, we have random variables x1, x2 up to xn or xk. And then we first put we define is u a set of random vector that is following standard uniform distribution. Then the relation between these two space is given by this expression what you can see on your screen where u is equal to capital T of x. Now this capital T is a nonlinear transformation which is given here. So u1 will be capital F1 x1 which is as per definition of probability is capital P x1 is less than equal to small x1. Now, in the next case, when we are going to find out u2, carefully note that it is capital of F2 of x2 given x1. That means we have first estimated x1 and u1. So, you anchored x1 in that value and when we go to the second variable, we use conditional distribution to find out u2. And similarly, if we do that, the last one uk will be the capital F of k of xk given x1 to up to xk minus 1. Now, the random vector u, which is having a relation of u equal to tx with the original space, it is in reality uniformly and independently distributed. So, the distribution of uniform uh, random variables you can see on your screen. So, it has constant uh, value of PDF within the domain. So, for example, if you follow this pink line between 0 to 1, it has a constant value and area under this curve is also 1. So, that tells the y coordinate of this constant uh, PDF. And obviously, once you do that, you can also estimate the CDF of this random variable that starts from 0 and ultimately goes to 1 linearly as we progress within the domain. Now, we can uh, equate ui with a new set of random variable zi which is following standard normal distribution. Now, if you do that, phi of zi is now related to capital F of x1 through this u1. So, obviously, phi of z1 is equal to u1 and which is equal to capital F1 x1. I just dropped that capital x here just to simplify this expression. Now, then obviously, capital phi of z2 will be equal to u2 and then which is equal to f of 2 of x2 given x1. Then if you follow the same logic, obviously the last one will be capital phi of zk and which is equal to capital f of k of xk given x1 to xk minus 1. Now if we apply an inverse transformation, we can write down z1 is equal to capital phi inverse of this expression. Now that correlates z1 with x1. So, we start with the x space and then we convert it into z space which is the standard normal space through conditional probability and that is what is Rosenblatt transformation. Now, how to bring in Rosenblatt transformation uh, for um, first order reliability problem. So, again we go back to the definition of first order reliability problem. These are all known to us. So, we start with a gx equal to 0 
which then first we convert to gz equal to 0 and in this case if you now note that Rosenblatt transformation converts the x space directly to z space. But uh, in case of first order reliability analysis using Rackwitz uh, algorithm, if you recall the hassofer lean definition uh, tells us the shortest distance in the standard normal space but for that uh, we linearize the normal uh, variables and get the linearized limit state that is defined by this blue line and then we find out actually this optimal distance and for that we solve the optimization problem uh, which I don't need to uh, describe again. The only uh, point to be noted is this alpha i which is the direction cosines at every point when we solve this optimization problem. Now the question is gx and gz is related through this uh, expression. You can see on the right hand side we have a Jacobian matrix and that Jacobian also we can estimate. And if we use this relation instead of uh, differentiating gz with respect to z, we can actually operate in the x space and correlate these two through this Jacobian matrix. Now, the moment uh, we try to adapt this further, let us see how we can do it using Morgenstern model. So first, let us solve the Morgenstern model and then I will apply uh, the same model to solve a reliability problem. So we have a gx in this case, gx equal to 10 minus x1 minus 3x2 equal to 0 and the joint distribution between x1 and x2 in this case is given to us. If it is not, if the marginals are given, then we can uh, estimate the joint uh, PDF or joint CDF. Now the question is find the equivalent random variables in the standard normal space using Rosenblatt transformation. So let us first solve this problem. So we know the marginals in this case we can easily evaluate the marginals. So f of x1 will be a exponential of minus a x1 and similarly also uh, the marginal of x2 is b exponential of minus of b x2. So once we do that now we can apply the Morgenstern model here you can see phi of z1 is equal to this value of uh, capital F1 of x1. So we know this expression of uh, marginal distribution that we get it from this um, expression and then we can integrate over the range. So we integrate from 0 to x1 and find out the expression for phi of z1. Then the moment we apply phi of z2, it is a conditional probability. So capital F2 of x2 given x1 and we, by now we know the expression for conditional probability. If you recall at the very beginning, we discussed this expression. So we can use that to estimate phi of z2. Now once we have these two expressions, then we can find out z1 and z2 just by taking phi inverse of the right hand side. So that we will do in a minute and you can see it here. So z1 is phi inverse of the expression that we have derived and z2 is similarly phi inverse of the expression we have. Now the right hand side is completely known. So if we know the parameters of the distribution in this case it is a and b. So then we can easily estimate for every x1 and x2 what is the estimate of z1 and z2. So let us check. So for example if you have a point 2 and 4 that means x1 is 2 x2 is 4 in the original domain and a is 2 and b is 3. In that case using this relation we can easily find out what is the respective point in the standard normal space and in this case it is 2.09 and 5.69. And if we repeat that exercise for the complete domain so we can generate different points and that you can see in the original domain we have x1 and x2 and just by looking at this, you can easily see that the values are cluttered here in the original space. And then for every uh, combination of x1 and x2, 
we can find out the respective z1 and z2. Now this z1 and z2 is the standard normal space and that we get from the Rosenblatt transformation. Now remember uh, in case of Natap transformation also we converted the original space into standard normal space but in that case our task was to find out the correlation coefficient in the standard normal space. And in this case we get uh, a similar transformation where x1 and x2 uh, is converted into z1 and z2. So if you follow the same model if you have uh, more number of random variables we can easily convert them from one space to another space. Obviously the question comes in our mind if we follow Rosenblatt transformation and Natap transformations are the same or are they different. So I will uh, suggest you to go through this paper. This is a very interesting paper and that talks about the uh, similarities between Rosenblatt and Natap transformation. But one thing uh, I wish to draw your attention is that whenever we use Natap transformation always remember that it gives an UI directly from the XI. If you recall the isoprobabilistic transformation that we discussed earlier, you directly get UI or ZI, whichever way you express the standard normal space, you directly get it from the XI. But in case of Rosenblatt transformation, if you see the expression, first we evaluate Z1 and the moment we evaluate Z2, we anchor Z1 or X1. So it is uh, through a conditional probability and therefore, uh, we can actually develop different uh, permutations and combinations of this Z1 and Z2 by changing this uh, conditional probability. So you must keep that in mind just by changing uh, different uh, definitions of um, conditional probability, you can actually develop different uh, strategy for Rosenblatt transformation. For example, in this case, we have phi of Z1, which is related to F1 of X1. And then the next one is phi of Z2. In that case, F2, X2 given X1. So we could do it the other way. Phi of Z2 is F2, X2. And then phi of Z1 is F1, X1 given X2. So that's how for n number of random variables, we can go for different combinations of conditional probability and all of them are valid. This I will discuss when we apply um, this Rosenblatt transformation for first order reliability problem. But for the time being, you can go through this paper. This is a very interesting uh, discussion on the two different transformation, one proposed by Rosenblatt, another proposed by Natoff. Okay, so let us continue. So we have a limit state in these cases. 10 minus x1 minus 3x2 equal to 0. And the Rosenblatt transformation that we are going to use is, you can see on your screen, phi of z1 equal to capital F1 of x1. Phi of z2 is capital F2 x2 given x1. Now, for the values of a equal to 2 and b equal to 3, and uh, say if we start with x1 equal to 1, then obviously the first relation tells me what is the value of z1. So, in this case, Z1 is equal to 1.101. And then, if we find out X2 and use that in the second expression to find out Z2, that also we can do, which is done here. <coughs> now, whenever you do that, uh, just remember, uh, for X2 equal to 3, uh, we have GX equal to 0. You can, you can just put this expression here. So, whenever you have X1 equal to 1, and then you can find out for which value of x2 equal to 0 and that is shown here and corresponding to this value uh, uh, we wish to find out what is the z2 and that you can see on your screen. So z2 in this case 4.168. The moment you do that next is we can easily estimate now the Jacobian the expression for Jacobian you can see on your screen. We can also find out the j inverse uh, because depending upon the uh, way we transform from x to z or z to x, we either need Jacobian or its inverse. So the expression for Jacobian also given here and the elements in the Jacobian matrix, if you look at, we know the complete expression for Jacobian. That will solve in a minute. So here you go. So we have 
a equal to 2 and b equal to 3 and for that let us start with the design point say x1 equal to 2 and x2, x2 equal to 4 and we have corresponding z1 and z2. Now this uh, relation given by Rosenblatt shows us how we can convert x1 to x z1 and x2 to z2 and then uh, we estimate the Jacobian you can see the Jacobian matrix and its inverse also in this case then the moment we estimate Jacobian then we can estimate direction cosines and direction cosines if you recall comes from this expression and in this case direction cosines also if we estimate using this matrix notation we ultimately get the expression for this direction cosines the moment we have direction cosines that we can use to estimate the new design point. So the new design point you can see on your screen and then we can use this to iterate it further and in the next iteration we can uh, continue the process until and unless we get the convergence. So the point is uh, we can use Rosenblatt transformation to solve a first order reliability problem where we start with the initial guess and through Jacobian we can actually estimate the expression for new design point. The moment we have new design point we can finally estimate beta which is the Euclidean norm in the standard normal plane. So that is shown here so we started with a initial point we had the beta and then um, from that we have new estimate of design point and at this uh, design point again our task is to find out the values in the original space that is x1 and x2 that also we can do using Rosenblatt transformation. So if we continue uh, we can estimate beta from the design point z and uh, just by taking the Euclidean norm we can find out beta and then uh, from this you can estimate the new design point z1 z2 and then finally we have to get the design point in the original space that means x1 and x2 that also we can estimate using mm, this uh, Rosenblatt transformation. So these two expression again is used now to estimate x1 and x2 from the values of z1 and z2. So you can see the values of x1 and x2 which is the design point and then again as I said we can continue the iteration until and unless the convergence is achieved. So that's how Rosenblatt transformation is adopted within the first order reliability framework. Now let us take a design problem. So we again use the same cantilever beam that we had uh, earlier. So it is subjected to a point load at the free end and then we design it against the support moment. So the GX in this case is known to us fy times z minus m equal to 0. So you use plastic moment capacity to design this beam and the random variables are fy and z. One of them is log normal, another them is normal and the parameters are given. So we know the marginal distributions in this case and then using Rosenblatt transformation we can correlate z space with x space through conditional probability as you can see on your screen. Now <coughs> If we start with a design point, then the moment we fix x1 and x2, we can estimate z1 and z2 using the relation you can see on your screen. So uh, we have um, the estimate of z1 and z2 and the moment we do that, we can estimate Jacobian and its inverse which is already explained to you and the moment we have Jacobian, we can find out what is the alpha 1 and alpha 2 and you can see the estimate of alpha 1 and alpha 2 on your screen and that is the estimate of direction cosines. And then if we continue, the moment we have direction cosines, then we can find out the estimate of beta and then using these two information, we can find out the new design point. And then once we have the new design point z1, z2, again we can use Rosenblatt transformation to convert them into x1 and x2. And that's what the new design point in the original space and then we repeat the procedure until and unless convergence is achieved. So let us consider one more uh, example. In this case, this example we have already covered in our net of transformation. So the original problem was um, where we had x1 and x2 
x1 is following log normal distribution and x2 normal, then we estimated joint PDF when the correlation coefficient is 0.15. This was earlier discussed, but the thing is same joint distribution we are going to use for Rosenblatt transformation to convert X space into standard normal space. And that's what is shown here. You can repeat the exercise that we have already discussed now. So the numerical values that you can see on your screen is from Rosenblatt transformation. So we have the original space X1 and X2. And for every combination of X1 and X2, we can find out Z1 and Z2 in the standard normal space. And uh, we can repeat this exercise for every combination of X1 and X2. You can see on your screen, we generate random numbers. We'll actually discuss uh, how to generate random numbers uh, in the following models when we'll uh, talk about simulation based reliability analysis. But for the time being, every combination of X1 and X2, we can convert it into Z1 and Z2 using a Rosenblatt transformation. This exercise, I leave it up to you because uh, we have already derived the joint distribution using NetApp transformation and today we have discussed Rosenblatt transformation. So for every combination, now you can generate that exercise as I leave it with you. We'll see when we'll go to simulation, how we can use this uh, transformation for uh, simulation based reliability analysis. So today, uh, we get the last mathematical model that is Rosenblatt transformation which converts X space into Z space directly and remember in the Z space we have the definition of uh, reliability index given by Hassofer and Lind. That's the reason uh, we can directly convert using this relation into standard normal space and then we can uh, estimate the design point, new design point using Jacobian that I have already demonstrated. With that, our discussion on isoprobabilistic transformation uh, comes to the end. Um, in our next module, uh, we will discuss second order reliability method. Thank you very much.